a screenshot that I have here from Randolph. Uh, what he would like to do is, depending if the trade opens, occurs, and opens below a moving average, then he'd like to use a smaller profit target, right? So 10 ticks, for example, if the trade opens below a moving average. But if the trade opens above the moving average, then he would like to use a larger profit target. And so in this example, 20 ticks. Uh, yeah, this is a fairly simple question here. So this won't take long to get through. So this question focuses on the profit target, right? So I'm just going to use a market entry just to get our order set started. And so for the profit target, I'm going to start with the 20 tick here. I'm sorry, with the 10 tick. And I'm going to adjust it to a 20 tick profit target, All right? So we'll just increase that up to 20 ticks. There we go. All right. So, right. So if if you're going to have you know automated profit targets um, or even a stop loss, you know the the um, you know this um, thought process is the same for profit targets and stop losses. And that is you, you for the initial placement here, right? So in the initial placement for your profit target or stop loss, um, you always want to use the largest distance first, right? And of course, the reasoning is that, you know, if we started our profit target off at 10 ticks um, and then it needed to be adjusted to 20 ticks, well, you never know how fast the market's going to move, right? So, you know, by the time, you know, everything gets calculated and processed and and Blackbird, you know, s tells your broker, oh, move that profit target, you know, out to 20 ticks. You know, if the market, you know, if you happen to experience an extreme volatile moment in that market, you know, you're going to get that 10 tick profit hit before, right, the software um, and your broker has a chance to move that 10 tick, you know, or that shorter profit target out to the larger distance, right? Just basically due to, you know, um, market volatility and, you know, internet lag and all that stuff, you know, you always want to move your profit targets out further and then pull them in afterwards right so that's why we're starting with the 20 tick profit target and then we're going to pull it in if so basically if price is below our moving average that's the only time we need to pull that profit target in to 10 ticks right so that's what we're going to do in the trailing actions here right so for our trailing rule let's get this enabled here so for our trailing roll, let's see here. All right, so if we're below the EMA, then, so we need to look, so we need to set up a trigger that's going to detect, right, when the market is below our EMA here. So actually, I didn't even cover that, but the EMA that is being used here, is a 89 EMA, 89 EMA. Yeah, it doesn't actually say that in the instructions, but that's what this blue and white moving average is. It's an 89 EMA there. All right. So the trigger we want to use is price versus indicator. All right. So we will just confirm whether the close of the bar is above or below that EMA, right? So for input B, let's change this to our moving average. There's our EMA. Set the period, 89. And there we go. So um, let's see here. Let's see. So it doesn't matter if it's... Actually, well, hold on. It, it, actually, I think it does matter here. Let me check the email. Just one. 
Okay, yeah, so this, um, yeah, so this screenshot here, yeah, it doesn't actually say, but these instructions here are for a long trade, right, for a long trade. So let's get back into the trigger here. So for a long trade, if the close is below the EMA, so A is going to be below B. And so for short, it's going to be the opposite. So A above B. So there we have it, right? So if we're in a long trade, if the close is below our EMA 89, right? That's our condition to pull that profit target into only 10 ticks, right? So the action is we're going to take, right, the entry price and create a new offset here. So it's only going to be 10 ticks, right? well, just like so, right? So you'll notice that this, this menu here looks exactly the same as our initial placement here, right? So our initial placement menu also, uh, right, the mode is set to price, right? The And it's the entry price. So we're taking the entry price and offsetting 20 ticks. So you'll notice that the, yeah, the initial placement and the action menus are going to be the same, except our offset is different there. So, all right. Now, one thing we need to figure out here is with this trailing rule here is that let's say the trade occurs just below our moving average, right? And so 10 ticks or 20 ticks or 10 ticks, right, would be, um, well, actually, I guess, yeah, the only thing that would matter is that our 10 tick profit target is just, you know, is going to be above the moving average. So what would happen is that if price, you know, as price moves up to try and hit our profit target, well, then the close is going to go above the moving average. And then that would push that profit target from 10 ticks um, to 20 ticks. Actually, no, it will not. I stand corrected. The opposite would happen. Sorry, the opposite would happen. Yeah. So if our trade occurred above the moving average, then it's going to be set to 20 ticks. But if price goes against the trade, right, price moves down and goes against the trade, then once price goes below the moving average, then that profit target is going to be pulled in to a 10 tick profit target. All right, so just keep that in mind. And that actually probably, um, uh, let's see, Randolph didn't mention anything about that, but that's, maybe that's a good thing. You know, if, yeah, so if the trade goes against you and it goes below that moving average, yeah, maybe you might want to take you know, a smaller profit target to try and get something out of the trade instead of, you know, taking a loss. So that might be a good thing here. But now, yeah, so keep that in mind here that the way that this is, the way that the triggers are set up right now, that if, you know, the market closes below the moving average at any time, that it will pull that profit target in to a 10 tick profit target. So now if we wanted to, we could prevent that from happening, right? So we could lock that, we could lock that profit target in as a 20 tick and only do this comparison here only once, only one time here. We could, we could do that um, as long as you're using um, trade signals, right? Only that, that could only occur if you're using trade signals here. Um, so what we, yeah, so if you're using a bloodhound signal, then we could basically prevent 
this trailing rule from ever executing except on this on the the bar that you know that the order executed on right so for example here let me and we click OK here so you know let's say we get a long signal there all right so a profit target is gonna be approximately up there so let's get this back open there right so again I guess yeah let me just kind of rephrase everything here right so with with just this one single trigger price versus indicator right blackbirds always comparing this trigger here it's always evaluating this trigger here so as soon as the market goes below our moving average then this you know this trigger becomes true and so the profit target right will be pulled into a 10 tick right so the only way to lock that 20 tick profit target in is we need to make sure that this trigger only is allowed to um, execute only once. Uh, not execute, be, I'm sorry, be evaluated. That's the right term, right? This price versus indicator, we want it to only be allowed to be evaluated one time when the position is opened, right? That's how we can prevent this price versus indicator from constantly being evaluated on each bar as each bar closes right and then and so if we can prevent the price versus indicator from continuing to evaluate then that will lock our profit target in as at 20 ticks up there and so one way that we could do that is if i switch over to the advanced tab right there's our price versus indicator and so what we could do, one option is, let's see, there we go. We could, so if, if and only if, you know, you're using Bloodhound signals, then we could use the Bloodhound signal trigger and set this up so that, you know, this is um, looking at the trade signals, right? So your Bloodhound signals used up here in right in the trade signal section well you would just set that up here um, as well as a trigger you know within this trailing rule and of course we need to adjust the signal trigger mode to signal in the same direction right because because the the signal the bloodhound signal being used to execute the trade right is the same bloodhound signal that we want within our trailing rule here right so that means and oh and then also the mode is going yeah we'll leave the mode here all simultaneously so with the mode set to all simultaneously that means that in order for our trigger to evaluate we have to have the bloodhound signal that executed the trade and our price versus indicator you know condition also has to be true so both of these triggers need to be true you know at the same time because it's set because the mode is set to all simultaneously right so basically this bloodhound signal you know yeah the trigger this bloodhound signal you know uh trigger being combined with the price versus indicator trigger you know that would that that effectively prevents you know um, the price versus indicator from evaluating as true any time after the the trade is has executed so that's one way we could do it in the next major update there will be another option here and that is with the delay so um, the delay is going to be updated here so that it's not just a delay but it's it's a uh, within or after um, type of condition right right now everything here acts as a delay you know but if we had but 
eventually we'll be able to say, you know, okay, only um, only evaluate this on the first bar within the first bar. But this right now actually acts acts as a one bar delay, so the delay doesn't uh, isn't what we want to prevent this from evaluating. Well, it doesn't work yet, but in the future it will work. So, and I'm just kind of looking through the other triggers here to see if maybe there's some other trigger that we could use to you know prevent the price versus indicator from evaluating on other bars you know after the position is open but yeah no I don't really see anything here alright so that does it for our first question so there, let's let's test it out, I guess. All right, and so well, the market's above. Yeah, it's above. So if I go long, there we go. There's a twenty tick profit target. If I close that out, now if I go short, there you can just hopefully you guys saw that our profit target went in as a 20 tick and then it got pulled in to a 10 tick i'll do that one more time so boom 20 tick and then it got pulled in to 10 ticks for that short trade so there we have it